John, the man behind Escalde Morquette. Welcome to Nightbreed. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, nice to be with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice, nice to have you. <laughs> um, so back in 2010, what in, what inspired uh, all this to to begin? Oh God. Oh well, I was in college, and like I thought, like when I got to college, I'd meet like more musicians who were like into metal. Which I kind of did, but no one's really interested in extreme metal. Like where I am, like I'm in quite, quite a quiet bit of England in the corner, where everyone's kind of like, like a lot of the scene, like around college, was like pop punk and like indie and all that kind of thing. So I like kind of started out of necessity because I kind of realised like no one liked the same music I did. So there's like no hope of getting a band who would play black metal or probably metal alone. So yeah kind of started out of necessity yeah well um whereabouts in in uh, london are you based uh i'm from norfolk so i'm like uh like like 20 miles out of norwich so we're like like on the coast like to the east yeah so quite far away from any cities <laughs> yeah. in like the countryside yeah um has the scene like gearing scene changed at all since you first started like is there any metal cropped up uh, yeah, like like once you get into like the city of Norwich, there's like a, a few bands. I mean that like there's not really that big a thing because I don't think metal in general is really in at the moment at all. Like guitar music's kind of out of fashion, but there's like a few like underground bands from where I'm from, like a few like really good ones. I've got like patches and like CDs and tapes and all that kind of thing. I try to support the scene as much as I can. I've met a few like people at gigs and like a few contacts, but I'm a bit of a Bit of a missing so I don't really go to the city all that often. I don't really go to gigs, especially nowadays. Now that there's a pandemic going on and all that kind of thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you've released uh, two full lengths, EPs, and a split since you know since you started. Um, with yeah. some some gaps in between, longer than others. Uh, what prompts you to you know write something and sit down and put some music out? Oh. Uh at the moment i'm finding it's just like the the uh like the work the state of the world is in to be honest and that i've become older and i've become more interested in like adult themes like politics and like society and like ethical issues and that kind of thing it just kind of lends itself to a uh, writing really bleak music at the moment so like especially at the moment like the release i'm working on at the moment it's like all about like my experiences working in like health and social care during like a health like crisis which is like really horrible, like working through uh, like uh, COVID outbreaks and that kind of thing, seeing like people die and all that kind of thing. It's like kind of really lends itself to that kind of mindset. Yeah, that's yeah. what's uh, kind of inspired me at the moment. But um, but like discovering new, new bands and that kind of thing can spark kind of things as well, or watching like movies or like TV series, that kind of thing. Especially like uh, recently I watched like the Chernobyl series and that's kind of really conjured loads of horrible images in my mind and like just like kind of like again like societal issues and that kind of thing. Yeah, so it can come from anywhere pretty much. Yeah. But, right, but music, sorry. No, you go, sorry <laughs> but, mate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But music as like a whole, it's kind of like a cathartic experience for me. It's like, it's something like I enjoy as well. So it's a hobby as well. So like just playing guitar can lend itself to writing music as well. Yeah. Yeah, no. Sorry to jump no. on you there. No, 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 that's good. <laughs> um, so Escalde Morquette, is that ice market in Norwegian? Is that right? Uh, I believe it means freezing darkness. I mean, when I was like 16 and I was like into like uh, like more traditional bands like the Gorgoroths and your uh, and your like Dark Friends and stuff. I remember buying a CD by a band called Frona Catarsis, which not a lot of people talk about, but they're really fantastic bands. And they, their album was called Debt to Scalde Marquettes. And, um, and I had like a little Norwegian dictionary at the time because I was like really into that scene and that kind of thing. So I went to like a bookstore and bought one and just like translate. I'd start like translating like lyrics and titles and that kind of thing. And their album Scouting More Chaos. But that's quite got quite a cool ring to it. So I kind of like translated it. It's probably something completely different. <laughs> but I, uh, but yeah, kind of stuck. And I like, that's just like how it kind of rolls off the tongue as well. And plus like the script on that album, I kind of like took as well and like, did the original logo for it as well so i thought everything kind of like went into line yeah yeah cool um what first got you into black metal back in the you know when you were younger uh 
it was just like kind of a logical progression of things. I think most people like get into metal or like as a phase and they kind of like you either go head first into it or you kind of like burn out of it and like get into more like softer genres. But like I remember I grew up during like a like the new metal boom and all that kind of thing. So like it was like Lincoln Park and like Limp Biscuit and that kind of thing. And then Slipknot were like around that kind of period. And I remember when the Iowa album came out and it was just full of blast beats and loads of negativity. And that kind of like caused me to explore like like Roadrunner artists. And at the time, uh, Cradle of Filth was signed to Roadrunner Records. And I remember getting into their discography and like kind of noticing that I like the earlier material more than the later stuff. Mm -hmm which was probably a bit more rooted in black metal. And then I found like, like Demi Borgir and all your gateway bands, like Emperor and all that kind of thing. And then I just got into like, I went through a period of just going to record stores and trying to find the most like lo-fi cult looking stuff, like your black and white high contrast covers and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, it's like a little like progression from like softer bands and gateway bands. And then, and then you get into like the really like lo-fi stuff and then you kind of like explore the like more progressive elements of the genre and that kind of thing so yeah kind of like explored every little bit of like most metal genres and then kind of like cherry picked what i liked and that kind of thing i think that's quite a common thing for most uh like extreme metal fans it just kind of escalates you see like see like what more underground heavier stuff you can get to it's kind of like a thrill of like discovering like the, the most niche kind of underground stuff yeah <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, you released a split in 2019 with Leatherback. Um, the cover yeah. has a really different look to your other releases. Like there's no logo. It's all this kind of bold print and the red and everything. How'd you get together with Leatherback? Uh, that's an old friend from college, actually. Um, he, uh, I had a friend who played drums and like, he was a really good drummer. So of course, if you're a really good drummer, everybody wants you in his band. So he was in like four or five bands and he had like a kind of like a metalcore kind of sounding band and Matt was the singer guitarist. So it, like he's always just been like a mate and that kind of thing. And like he moved to Reading and he started like making music on his own. I'd, I'd assume for the same reasons I do because you can't really find that many people. But I've always had like contact with him. And then like, I like for like 2018, 2019, I was recording like loads of stuff, but like experimentally, like experimenting with like recording techniques, guitar tones, tunings, like ambience and like instruments and that kind of thing. And a lot of the material was, uh, it was okay, but it was inconsistent. So like, I thought there's like three all right songs here. I'm gonna see if anybody's like interested in releasing the split. So I just shared a status and then Matt went, yeah, I'd really be up for that. He had like three songs already written and that kind of thing. So I was like, okay. And and the artwork was done by him. I was just like, I want something quite, uh, I suppose like grainy, industrial kind of looking, just like kind of something quite simplistic. So for if it's like a split, like it's not really uh, like re representative of my catalog as a whole. So I quite like the idea of doing something different because the material was so different as well. So yeah, so that's how that came about and like we kind of released it together like a lot of it's like a little tiny run of like DIY CDs and that kind of thing. But yeah, Matt's a uh, kindred spirit. He's like a solo musician and he makes his own pedals and like that kind of thing. He like does all the wiring and stuff on his own. He's a really interesting musician, completely different from what I do. And I quite like the idea of doing a split with something that's like completely different. So it doesn't like blur into one. So it is like a split, split, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so May 29th this year, uh, punctuated by the screams of dying animals, comes out. Uh, <laughs> did you did this have a different approach from your anything you did earlier when you were coming into it? Uh, yeah. Like I know, like uh, metaphysics of mass murder, my other album. God, my my song titles are really mouthful. Uh, like. Um, yeah, I'm um, for that. Like, I was kind of like more interested in making like an atmospheric album, kind of a bit more slow, calculated, like a bit like more horrifying. But I think with Punctuated, I kind of wanted to make a technical metal record, like a bit more uh, like an artistic approach, I suppose. Like, I was listening to a lot of like Emperor and like the Septic Flesh and like. Like I love periphery and like more technical bands and that kind of thing. So I thought like I'll try and experiment with like just doing loads of palm muting, like as many notes as I can fit into a riff and all that kind of thing. 
But, um, sorry. Um, I like the idea of not making the same album twice. So I thought to myself, like, I really liked Metaphysics and it was really successful. A lot of people dug it, but I didn't really like, really like the idea of writing like part two. I like got like a couple of months into composing and I just thought like this sounds exactly the same. So I thought I'll just like try and do something different, but kind of still in the same ballpark. So it was just like, I thought I wanted loads of speed, not a lot of dynamics. In hindsight, I think it was a tiny bit of a mis mistake because I kind of forgot like uh, music's a bit more interesting when you have like dynamics and that kind of thing. But I'm quite proud of how technical that record is and like how I managed to play it. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't want to like play it live or anything just because it would be a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely noticed lots of little bits where you're kind of stopping and playing, you know, like a syncopated bit here and like, yeah, it's interesting to listen to, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, when you're writing, I know I noticed there's lots of kind of symphonic, symphonic elements in there and, or drums or guitars, like what sort of comes yeah. first? Do you have like a tradi like traditional, this comes first or are you kind of just whatever? Uh, I think I approach it in the same way like a, a traditional band would. I like write guitar riffs and kind of jam with the computer drums, I suppose, and see how it goes. But most of the songs start as guitar and drums and I kind of like leave gaps or I like simplify, well, I simplify as much as I like to like guitar riffs and I know like I'm kind of going to put something over the top of it. But usually I just like write it on guitar, record the guitars, and then kind of listen to it back and then kind of work out where I want to put strings and stuff and like where I want to put like lead lines and that kind of thing. It all, it all kind of just like uh, congeals together like in like kind of a fluid way. I'm quite lucky where like music seems to kind of fall into place sometimes. It's just kind of... Um, a lot of like trial and error so like usually i like export the whole album and kind of try and like record strings piano over the top of it and just see what works and then kind of bring it back to like cubase and then kind of mix it all together but um but yeah like i usually leave gaps and and i know if i've heard like music on a movie or something i want to kind of try and recreate that or like if i listen to an album i say oh i quite like that ambient section i'm gonna leave this gap between the drums and the guitar and then try and put that there. Like the um, out song from the last album, The Spectres of Pripyat, I knew at the start I wanted kind of like a um, cinematic kind of like foghorn frog kind of thing to uh, to like start off the track. So I just like left a big gap and then I put drums where I knew where it would kick in and all that kind of thing. So it's kind of like, um, like the plates kind of spinning them all at once. You kind of like try and keep one thing on the go and then you know that thing's going to be on the go and that thing's going to be on the go and then we'll just like come together yeah <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah cool yeah. um the track the furnaces of australasia um is that about the bushfires down this way by any chance yes it is um i said that's so uh jolly but it's a it's a really horrible thing um i'm glad you picked up on that because obviously you're from that part of the world um it's it's about Australia, of course, with the bushfires. Like a lot of the like the lyrics in it are about that. But as a whole, it's about like uh, dramatic climate events that keep happening more and more often. So it's like about the Australia fires, but it's also about the Greek fires at the moment, like uh, the Californian fires as well. It's it's it, like. It's about one certain subject, but it's like an umbrella kind of thing as well. It's about like uh, people not being able to ignore that like these events are happening anymore. Like I like to think like big things like this are going to wake people up to what we're doing to the planet. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's about Australia, but it's about like everything. It's about people like going shit. What's going on in the world? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. What other themes have you touched on in this new one? Like what other sort of things are you addressing? Oh, okay. Um, the first track is about um, like about my immediate area around me. It's about like uh, people's advantageous behavior during the pandemic, like what I was seeing around me, like people, like my neighbors having like five food deliveries a week and that kind of thing, taking it away from people who probably need it, who are self-isolating. 
Like it's about like people having parties and all that kind of thing. It's about people just like flitting, ignoring rules and that kind of thing. It's just like it was about like selfish behavior of people I could see around me. Uh, like the Odium's Crown was about uh, the prime ministers like nepotistic behavior and like causing the death of like 150,000 people by being really stupid. Uh, the title tracks about the meat industry again, because I'm like uh, I'm like a vegetarian, vegan kind of thing. So it's like kind of my uh, again. I said it was like a cathartic experience making music. So I'm just putting all my negative feelings about it into that. Uh, Spectre's Pripyat was about um, the the Chernobyl series, but like but kind of again like a more broader kind of theme. It was about like. Um, how quickly man can destroy nature, but how kind of resilient nature is at the same time. Because if you look at like the era of Pripyat, it's become like the biggest um, like wildlife sanctuary in the world now, just because the like the natural world's like recolonized it and everything. Uh, I know we touched on the furnaces of Australasia, but yeah, it's usually like usually a lot of my lyrics are just like things about society as a whole or it's like more broader things yeah it's like it's like i like to think it's like thinking man's topics it's like quite if you scratch between beneath the surface it's kind of like more more bit bit more deeper than the most metal topics i'd hope anyway <laughs> yeah oh, nice um so what's what's next for a scale day more what are your plans for the for the near future uh i'm just gonna keep on going I suppose I'm already writing um, an EP I, I want to do something a bit shorter because the last one the last two full releases were a lot of work because like even though they're only like half an hour long and like it's quite a, a lot of work making a full length release so I'm going to try and do an EP I'm going to try and do like a continuation of the Prophosis EP I did like years and years ago but it's going to be like more of like a concept album about like my experiences within the like the healthcare system, as I said, and then like about the UK and the pandemic and that kind of thing. Which I think probably a lot of musicians are doing at the moment. But I'm going to try and like have like four tracks, which kind of outline different things about it. And I'm going to try and like use riffs and ideas that I had on the Prophosis EP and kind of use them again. Um, and. And I've bought a seven string guitar for it, so I'm going to start down tuning again because I quite like. I listened to that EP again. I liked the kind of like, the murky quality to down tuning. It's kind of a bit more like ominous and a bit more messy. Which I like when I record, I try not to go too clean, just because I think you lose something if something's too polished, especially with like extreme metal or black metal in general. Like I think if something's too clean, it can kind of sound a bit like soulless i think sometimes so yeah so i'm working on that ep but i think as like any other plans i'll just like try to get a bit more success plug it a bit more and i'd like to get some merch printed as well but like that's a uh that's a bit of an undertaking if you don't have that much money because i'm trying to re upgrade my uh, recording equipment as well so yeah, a lot of expensive plans, but a lot of like creative plans as well. Yeah, and it's coming quite quickly this time. I think it's because I'm not, I've changed jobs and I'm not like in such a high pressure kind of environment any, anymore. I've got like a whole, whole better like mindset at the moment. I'm not like knee deep in depression anymore like I was on my last release. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good to hear, man. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing what next, what comes next. And uh, thank yeah. you very much. Thanks a lot for your time, John. I hope you, uh, yeah. Keep going, man. It's good stuff. Cheers. Oh, thanks, Matt. Thank you. Cool. See you later. Bye. See ya.